welcome back to An Hour with Crowder with your host Crowder. And I have a good ass guest today. I know I say that to a lot of good ass guests, but this is the goodest of the good ass guests. I got Jason Whipley, Jackson Whipley with me, and we're going to be talking about mental health issues and life coaching and all of that stuff around. Just introduce yourself a little bit if I missed anything. All right. So it's Jackson Whitby. So... Um, yeah, I'm bad with noms. I'm sorry, bro. Oh, you good? You good? I'm a life and business coach based out of Dallas. I do specialize with the LGBT community and also with the small business and entrepreneurs. Um, <clears throat> so far, I've been um, I've been working on a project here um, with our community, bringing some some new tools here to help with entrepreneurship, some legal tips, some real true value around this time, especially that we are finally as a community coming around to the Black Lives Matter. Woo. Even though we've been know it's matter, we've been know it matters. Yeah, it matters. We finally all trying to hop on board. And so I'm really trying to um, get out there and um, bring some true value to the community. And I have this project that I really want you guys to look out for. I'll be um, I'll be releasing it here soon before the end of summer. It give me some time to get it perfected. But yeah. before the end of summer, I will have something for the community concerning the Black Lives Matter. That's going to bring some real value, some real knowledge, some things that we can give out to ourselves, some knowledge that we can give out to our kids and we can pass them on for our future generations to come. For sure. Hey, can you get a little bit in the mic? Sure. Yep, right there. Yep, me... Yep, that sounds great right there. Right. So tell um, anything that you want to tell us about, like tell us a little bit about Jackson, Coach Jackson and Trans Life Coaching, if I got that right. Transcending. Transcending. Transcending limits. Li transcending living. Limits, limits coaching. coaching. Yeah, let me I'm give you a little background sorry. story on transcending limits. So transcending limits, when you think about to transcend, you think about reaching a new level to take it to a new level of transformation, moving from one point and rising above the challenges. And so my name was actually centered and inspired by my own life challenges and me being able to overcome my own adversities and challenges coming from single parent home. Um, four, four siblings and we moved around a lot um, <clears throat> I came out um, a lesbian uh, when I was 12 so most of my life I spent fighting spent fighting to try to make some value when I first told my mom that I was lesbian she kind of like broke down because she was just like baby you young and you're already gonna put this mark on you when did you come harder. when did you come out I was 12 Whoa, that's early. Right. That's super early. Right. I had already known that I was a bit different. I didn't know exactly what it was. And at that time, it was real. Um, it was The internet was new, and people were up in those chat rooms. Yeah. My little young <laughs> fast ass up in those chat rooms up in there trying to figure it out, trying to explore around, trying to figure ASL, out. ASL, age, sex, and Man. location, baby. <laughs> <laughs> man, like, man, I was up in them Yahoo chat rooms for real. Wowing. So, and then I was trying to figure it out. And so when I came and told her, um, she was kind of like, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging. And I was like, okay. I'm like, all right. But I didn't take it as a big deal. I was like, okay, it's going to be challenging. People always say it's challenging, life challenges. Well, I mean, we struggle all the time. So I was like, all right, I, I was like, I'll be a, I'll be able to do it. I only really had two choices. I mean, I could either try to go back in the closet, act like I didn't yeah. just tell you what I told you, or I have I don't I'm not sure about my my feelings. But I just went ahead and I was like, this is what I'm gonna do. This is how I'm gonna live. And I never decide. I never ever wanted to be in the closet. So even when I transitioned, when I was <clears throat> when I was 28, when I started transitioning, yeah, I never like. I came out within two days of letting my family know, and like when I t when I came out and I had said that I was transitioning, like my brother he texted me, he was like, "Oh my gosh!" He was like, "You're on Facebook telling people already," and I was like, "Yeah," I was like, "Why not?" So I was like, this so, is my truth. <laughs> so okay, so we all know that it's one thing to come out as um the L. as a yeah <laughs> as a lesbian. But it's a whole different ball game to come out when you're trans because that's almost a whole different person. Like, people can see that you're still a girl in, in you know, boy clothes. Like, I get asked out all the time by dudes. 
Like I'm working in my uniform and they like, hey, okay. queen. And I'm like, king. Right, right, right. <laughs> but what before was it like with that? Before I transitioned, I got hit on all the time. I used to wear like suits and things. And yeah. Guys would hit on me. But Pretty those, snazzy guys, though. those guys were, um, they were bi or they were gay. So most of the guys that have ever hit on me have always hit on me in the masculine form. And so they have some kind of attraction to the masculine form of me. Mm. They don't have the attraction to the female size of me. Of course, that when if we ever have to do that, of course, if they thinking about me in the sexual nature, then we'd be able to be compatible in this. But as far as them thinking about me on the outside, they are the masculine form. And so when I was tra- so as I transitioned, like the the amount of attention that I was getting from like the guys, it basically kind of like shut down completely like, cool yeah i'm gonna shut down like but- almost completely <laughs> like unless like unless like it's this like a, a nigga guy. unless it's a, <laughs> it's less it's a gay guy because i'm in the lgbt community so yeah. of course gay guys are gonna come and like hit on me so or bi guys so i still get those but as far as just like guys who like are okay with the tom girl tomboy because there's guys that like that yeah there's but you're not a tomboy you're a man exactly, now exactly exactly and so that's I think weird that's, i think that's what kind of like changed it over is that i actually have transitioned so they think they make a difference they make a difference between a stud and a, and a trans man so okay so with all that being said what made you huh <laughs> A pun. What made you transition into life coaching? Because I've seen you on Facebook. I'm your friend. I've known you since high school. You've been into a lot of entrepreneur type things. What made you go into life coaching and be like, oh, this it? Well, <clears throat> it actually was inspired by one of my really, really close um, friends. Um, he was going through some things, and he was just like, man, he was like, I think you should be a life coach. And he was like, you have always helped me out. You've always been a listening ear. You've always been able to, like, keep me on my goals, keep me focused. And he was like, you should be a life coach. And I was like, I was like, what? I was like, no. Nah. I was like, I don't know what that is, first of all. I was like, um, I was like somebody um, – Somebody has said that to me before, and I was like, I just kind of, like, brushed it off. And I kind of, like, brushed it off with him, too, because I was just like, I, whatever, I didn't think about it. And so <clears throat> so I have a therapist, and so I had went to counseling, and I had um, I was talking to her. She was just, like, tell, um, she was just like telling me about um, some different things that I could do. And then I was talking to her about what he had said about me being a life coach, and I was like, I don't know anything about it. And she was like, you know, she was like, Listening to uh, like everything that you told me about um, in our sessions and things, she was like, "I really think that you should, you could be uh, like a really great life coach." And so then I was like, "Well, I was like, if more than one person think it, I was like, and then I've heard it before. I was like, maybe I should." Look, look into it see what it is like before I just like keep closing closing the door because I was like this year will be the year that I was going to try to be open-minded and try to expand my horizons I was like before I was like I was so set in my ways or I was so goal oriented and focused that these are my goals and then like that's all I will ever like think yeah. about and so it was like I wanted to be more expansive I wanted to have a, a different perspective and broaden my horizon so I was like Give me, let me think about something let, let me let me look into it so I was like looking into it and I was like oh wow I was like wow and then it really started resonating and I was like that makes sense that makes sense and so like I had um I had lost my job and so I was like I didn't have anything I didn't have anything that I I had to I had to do and so I used the last of my four hundred one k and I spent it um, getting a certification for life coaching and I went through the modules I got my certification and I had already had my master's in business so I already knew how to get like, get it going the things that I would need to get it like get it started and basically um, off the ground and so I went and ordered my business cards got my stuff going. And, like, on November 11th, I officially announced that I was open and that I'll be um, life coaching. Um, And it's been on since then. Um, It took me, like, maybe a couple days before um, I was able to get my first um, client. And it was a little discouraging because I was like, I wanted my clients before. But it was, um, I had dropped one of my stories about, um, 
about where I came from, my struggles, and how I had two strokes, and how I had overcame that, and how I kept going through college, even though they told me not to go through college, how I had started walking. I was like, I've been like the best health state of my life, and like I was just like, but I was just basically giving out my testimony, and so um, a lady from from Facebook saw it, and she like she contacted me, and she was just like. I don't want to talk to you. She was like, I don't know exactly what I want to talk about or. or how so what was that conversation? What did she talk to you about? Well, I can't say. Oh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> but she, I mean, she 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 contacted me from my life coaching, and she was like, she wanted to talk to me. But in the, I can't say that in the in our session, she did ask me exactly how did I become a life coach, and I was like, I don't know if that's anything that you can. I don't know if you can become life coach or if it's something that I feel like you just kind of intuitively, intuitively have as a gift because I feel like the things that have made me a great life coach are my life experiences. And most of these things I never asked for, most of my struggles and things that I can inspire people through or motivate people through were things that happened to me, and I didn't want them to happen to me. These yeah. were challenges. These were life lessons. These are things that I had to learn the hard way pressure was was applied to get these things. And so I'm like, I don't really know how to tell you, like, how to be, yeah, how, how to you, get to, yeah, how how get you to got be the life coach that you like what or what you want to be able to see for yourself as life coaching. Basically all all I know is that if you feel like you're able to help somebody, if you feel like you're passionate about listening to people and you want to serve your community, then it could be something that you could enjoy doing. Yeah, so with all of that being said, I have a very important question because we see how I see life life coaching is is and don't take offense because it's not. Um, it's like a glorified motivational speaker, if if you will say. is someone that takes you in and tells you advice about what you need for your life, sets you goals. I actually looked up what it was because I was like, what is life coaching? And life coaching helps you set and achieve goals and um, recognize and solve problems in your life. So my question to you is... For what's better for someone's life, um, depending on what state they're in, um, and you can do a example of either one, a life coach or a therapist, because like a therapist is somebody that you got to go shield out money to. Of course, you're not doing anything for free, mm -hmm. but a, a therapist is someone you go on their couch, you sit down with them. They got this medical degree or whatever. And then a life coach tells you but they have less schooling than you and versus a therapist me personally i would take a life coach over a therapist because a therapist has the power to be able to give you medication which i don't necessarily agree with and we'll get into that a little bit later but I just want to know which one, depending on what state in their life, whether they're in the age of what, let's see, um, um, let's say 13 to 18 versus 25 to 35. When would you necessarily need a life coach versus a therapist? I think that. With the life coach and the therapist, they do have two completely different definitions, and I think that they both are useful. I know several people who uh, who simultaneously use them both. I have people that use me as a life coach, but they also have a therapist because they do two different things. And so, as a life coach, you do um, we. We do help people set goals. We do help them through life changes and transitions. And so that is important for people who are going through those things. We all need somebody to talk to. We all set goals. We all sometimes we sit in dormant. Sometimes we have things that we want to talk about. And you want to just be able to bounce some ideas and get some advice. The life coach is going to be useful. Sometimes you are going through some things that are mental health disorders, somebody that needs that extra skill training that comes when you become a counselor or a therapist. Um, and so I feel like they both are very useful to somebody, and they can be used at any range. I mean, there's life coaching for children, there's um, and there's therapist for therapy for children as far as um, psychiatry and psychology. So... Um, as far as ranges and ages, there's no cap. There's no minimum. 
Um, anybody can use either one. It really depends on how you said it at the beginning. Depends on what state you're in. Depends on your goals. What are you What are you looking to see um, as far as the changes that you're um, looking to see? Have if you're dealing with some bipolar tendencies, you probably want to get somebody that can get you some medicine. Somebody will uh, some extra specialization in those type of mental health disorders. So if you're going through, you setting some new goals. Hey, you're getting out of college. You're looking for a new career change. You might want to get you a career counselor, so a career life coach. You want to start a new business. You might want to get you a business coach. You want to lose some weight. You want to get you a fitness coach. You wanted to get your budget together, get you a financial coach. There's coaches and there's over hundreds and hundreds of but, niches. And but see, that's what I'm saying. Like when I think a life coach, I think coaching me in life overall, I don't think that if you're a life coach and I come to you as a life coach, I don't think that I should have to go to somebody else for physical like you should know that too. I don't think that you. I should have to go to somebody else for some other things or whatever like that. Life coach, life happens to everybody. Right. So I think so. Everybody's a life coach, but there's niches. So and within the life coach umbrella, like if you're looking for a life coach, you're still going to have to narrow it down. You're not going to be able to just find a life coach that encompasses everything in your life. You're going to have to be specific. Like for me, like I'm an LGBTQ coach. So if somebody's transitioning, somebody's lesbian, somebody's trying to figure out how to come to their parents, somebody's trying to figure out how to deal with their feelings, somebody's trying to figure out how to deal with their relationship, that's what I would specialize in. That's my niche because that's the community. That's where my life experiences are. Yeah, so, but I still think that like... I wouldn't help you with fitness. Yeah, you still wouldn't help with fitness, but you just went to the kickboxing gym before you got because here. Because everybody but, wants... To, because a life coach, we have to work on ourselves too. So I I mean, we may be having those same... We may have some of the resources and we may have the discipline and the knowledge to be able to coach you and help you and be like, hey, yeah, you probably need to put a 30 to 45 minutes of some type of activity in your life because right now you're not doing anything at all. So we can't give you that type of advice, but we wouldn't be the person that actually did the actual coaching. So we can direct you to your resources and we can help you kind of like make sense of some puzzles that you have in your life. But we may ne not necessarily be our specialty or what we necessarily may coach you through because I would coach somebody through some business. But like I said, I wouldn't do the fitness because I have a fitness coach. I have a personal trainer. So I have a coach. I have people that help me with my finances. So I use coaches and I advocate for everybody to use a coach. We all need – we all have – places in our life that we have some weak areas that we can have we can use somebody to help us get some accountability yeah um see like see this is how I, this is how i see it i see it as like uh, as a life coach you're going through life um me personally i would pick someone that is older than me way older than me because they've been through life so i need life advice so when i think about a life coach i think about somebody that's just coaching me through life everybody goes through life um not anything in pacific they just need advice about life oh i broke up with my boyfriend or girlfriend i don't know what's going on okay well you could teach me about that because everybody didn't been through um a breakup before hey i'm battling with drugs everybody didn't smoke some weed before hey i don't know how to do um change a tire i know how to change a tire everybody didn't change the tire I do agree with you. It is certain type of niches, and, you know, that's when a life coach comes into an avenue avenue you into those different ways to get to those people that just want that certain niche. But I feel like someone that just need a life coach should be able to go to anybody, and that life coach should be able to tell them just about life. I feel like if somebody's looking for something that's a niche, then they need to definitely go see a therapist because a life coach is coaching you on life, which everybody experiences. But they do have niches, most life coaches. Almost all of them, if they've been able to market themselves properly, they have narrowed down their focus. 
And so every life coach is put, have a focus on. Like whenever you go to a website, you're looking for a life coach, it show you what kind of things that they have specialties in or they focus on. Like some of them po- have anxiety or PTSD, and so they coach people with anxiety and PTSD. So we can also help people through mental health, and we don't necessarily have to direct them to a therapist because some of them don't want to use medicine, so they want the holistic things. And so therapy, um, the, sorry, far, so, as far as psychiatry, those really are people that are focused on the, the medical side and being able to give them administer those um the medical the pills and things like that but i think that when people are seeking life coaches that they really have to like they can go to uh, any life coach they can go to any life coach but that life coach is going to be able to narrow down they're going to be able to help you based off of their experiences because you may be a black woman and you may go to a white man, he may not share the same life experiences. He may not be able to coach you adequately. He may not know anything about church struggle, about your path, about what you need. So he may be able to give you resources as far as somebody to help, or he may try to help you himself, even though he may know inherently that he may need to give you to somebody else who could co- more correlate better to where you are. I always advocate for people to do their research on a coach. A lot, um, a lot of them have their own bios on there. They have what they specialize in. They have what they're what they do in their lives and their interests. And so, people yeah. can do their research and see if that coach is somebody that resonates with them. A lot of people who talk to me, they want to interview me too. It's a, it's a two sided interview. I need to see if I can help you, and then they want to see if that I can resonate with them as well. And so, I feel like if you are looking for a life coach, you can't hold Realistically, look at it in a big in a big picture because you're really gonna have to narrow down if that person's really if that person has anything that they have inside of them that they they can use you to your goal that you have set up and there's different goals there's different people we all individuals and so your goal may be to lose weight while somebody else's is to gain. So would you if somebody okay so I'm someone that has um. I'm someone that's um, just say um, overweight. I need. Would I go to a life coach or would I go to a fitness? Fitness. fitness you wait. You go to a fitness coach. So why? But a fitness coach is a life coach. Okay, so 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 okay. everybody has their niche and they go to life, but everybody. Um, but the life is the bigger point. Life is every every coach, fitness, business, LGBT. We all are life coaches yeah see i think that's where i'm getting it confused from is that i'm thinking a life coach is gonna teach me about life and give me advice about life when i have problems in my life it's a part of your life they they put it under the life as life like a like health and wellness there's so many health things so many wellness things there's so many life things so each one of them have categories under like if you're a health and wellness coach you could be herbalife you could be beach body you could be a health and wellness coach that's selling. okay so they all but they all are health and wellness coaches but you have to ask them which one do you distribute for okay which, which company so we all are life coaches but you need to ask us what do we specialize in are we going to specialize in helping you with your fitness or are we going to specialize in helping you with your finances okay so it's basically like life coach is just a just the broad the statement mm-hmm. and then you go underneath that umbrella and figure out which one right. that you need and i'm actually want to double back on something that you said about um medication the therapist versus the medication because me personally i'm not into medication i don't think that i think in cer- certain circumstances you should be able to take medication but i really do think that most of that is just a crutch I honestly do, and I'm going to get a lot of backlash on this, but I don't care because there's so many things that you can do before you get to the point where you need medication. I don't think that people that are working, that are clearly smoking weed, having the time of their life from day to day or whatever, needs medication. I just don't. I think that it's something deeper inside of them that a life coach might be able to fix versus a therapist and you laying on their couch and the therapist like, oh, well, I don't know. And then they give you a script for some medicine. My question to you is which one is beneficial and which which one do you think is better, advice or medicine? I think that 
they both don't you don't you damn don't you they dare both, damn it they say I, because I battle <laughs> mental I battle mental illnesses so yeah, I, I have too and so I know that there's there's with the mental illness, mental illness that it is a disorder and it's uncontrollable so those meds are important and you have seen where police officers have killed people because they have mental disorders and they weren't able to control themselves. They may have autism. They may have dirt. They, um, I worked with the special ed community myself. And so I do understand that we do have special needs. Those are the, those are instances are medicine. Yeah. Those are the instances that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about motherfuckers out here that, you know, what a dollar It's the big pharmacy. You know, they going to push medicine. Yeah. I mean, I do understand that they going to push medicine, but that's their job to push, push medicine. medicine. You have to be as a human being, understand and know yourself and be like, okay, what's the real problem? People don't what's know how to real... advocate for themselves. Yeah, they, they don't. And you got to know what the real problem is. Me, I look full disclosure. I was diagnosed and I say diagnosed because I really don't think that I was that they misdiagnosed me. Actually, I really feel like, oh my, you know, somebody told me, yeah, you got misdiagnosed. Mm -hmm. So that happens. Yeah, and that's the main thing that I have with that is that they're out here misdiagnosing people and then putting them on meds, and then people are using them as crutches. I mean, crutch. And then they turn around, and when they wow out, then it's like, oh, well, you know I'm bipolar, girl. I was diagnosed as schizophrenic bipolar at one point in time in my life, once at 15, and then again at 20. So I went all throughout my life thinking that I'm schizophrenic bipolar, and when I would wow out or I'd do drugs, then it was just like, oh, well, you know, and even my family would make an excuse for me. Oh, well, you know, she's schizophrenic bipolar, whatever like that, and I really do feel like people use that medication as a crutch. They take that medication, and they're only well for a little while. M whole time, you just really need a strong father figure in your life or a strong mother figure in your life, or you need some goals to occupy your time and your mind. And that's why I would totally pick a life coach versus a therapist because the therapist has that power to give you that medication. And then on top of that, now they, they, they fuel in the pharma company and they pockets getting fat too, because you still, even though you taking that medication, you still got to come back her every Tuesday and come talk to me for $35 an hour but a life coach, they teaching you real life coach situations. They really teaching you about life. They not teaching you about the vast majority of the medical field that if you read this book and you have these um, these things that's going on with you, then, oh, this is this. Oh, you, you jerking and you have bad thoughts and you do this. Oh, well, that's um, core size with schizophrenia when really it could just be a nervous disorder. Why do you, and a life coach could ask you, why are you nervous? Oh, well, I feel nervous when I get into these settings. Okay. Well, have you tried this? And cognitive behavior, um, exercises are a really big thing that is free and it don't need no medication. That's all just working with your mind versus a therapist. And I'm not saying all of them do that, but a lot of them do, will give you medication and throw you off on medication. And I have a big problem with that because, you know, the biggest age range that goes to therapists and they administer or write a prescription to go see a doctor to go get medication is 15 to 21. Yo, the, um, your cortex in your brain ain't even developed at 21 it develops at 25 so you already gave this person medication and they brain ain't even fully developed yet versus a life coach somebody say something to you you remember that for life somebody give you some medication it's not even a cure you know when I figured out that medication that I was against medication when I got diagnosed as schizophrenic bipolar and I was taking the medication for like two, three months or so. And I was like, okay, so when do you think I'm going to get off this medication? And she said, get off. And I said, yeah, when I'm going to be through with this medication? And she said, I mean, we either higher the dose or we lower the dose. But, you know, we'll figure out along the way when you need to be off the medication or not. And I'm like, okay, so when I'm, I'm going to be taking this medication, when am I going to be kind of off of it oh we don't know at this point 
imagine if somebody we all think like okay mental mental um illnesses such as depression and stuff like that is a disease okay so if you have chlamydia and you ask somebody okay when am i gonna get rid of chlamydia well we gonna figure out when the shot is gonna work wouldn't you be like okay bitch what the fuck but now with middle illness, we just kind of stray it off like, okay, well, I'm going to be taking these pills for the rest of my life. And then you start using that as a crutch and then you start wilding out and then start blaming it on your mental disorder. Like I said, in some cases, I do feel like medication is beneficial because sometimes you just can't get around it for whatever reason. Your brain just doesn't work how a normal brain works. Chemical imbalances are real. And I do feel like those people definitely need medication. But it's a lot of people that take that medication and they decide to abuse it or they decide to use it as a crutch. Oh, I can't go out and go get no job. I was one of them. I was on government assistance for a while because I was like, oh, I'm schizophrenic bipolar. I can't get no job. I can't keep no job. But the moment that I started to set goals for myself, started exercising, started eating right, started doing cognitive um, cognitive behavior exercises in my head, positive affirmations, then all of that changed around for me. And you know what? And I, not to take away from um, – um, coach, life coaching at all, but my mom in my life was a big life coach. She didn't baby me. She said, this is what it is, this is what the world is, and this is what you're going to have to do. And the moment that I did that, then I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to have to do. Why do you think that takes away from life coaching? That because shows that anybody can be a life coach. Because, because I feel because like that it takes... mom is a life coach. Yeah, I do, but I feel like I didn't want to take away from it because just saying anybody could do it is such a shitty stretch mm. because so many people are shitty at it. And so many people think that because, oh, I can speak a good word and I could say this and say that, then I'm a life coach. No, you actually have to go through real things and actually be able to help people and not just help people one time, but help them over and over and over because you can't just say something to somebody. Sometimes you're going to have to pound it in their head and really get them up off their feet mm -hmm. to, to do it. You have to have a certain skill set. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I don't think anybody can be a life coach. No, I don't want the nigga that drinks beers every day around the corner to tell me some real shit. Nigga, you homeless, bro. <laughs> no. I mean, you, you definitely, definitely <laughs> want to listen to somebody that uh, makes sense to you. If you. I mean, if you think that that person probably not where you want to be then i mean that's you probably not the best person yeah you probably <laughs> evaluate, always evaluate your advice sources period in life evaluate your life your advice sources because anybody can tell you anything but you want to evaluate that that information that they're giving you and see if it's going to be useful or, or not and then the good ones keep it and the bad ones throw it away Exactly. So who are the some of the people that you will definitely refuse life coaching from? Let's let's be real. Come on, we on an <laughs> hour with Crowder. Don't you on that jack? Come on, be oh, real. Man. So for me, I think my no goes will be people that I had to report because um, as a life coach, we do have our, our ethical standards and guidelines and we do have um, a duty to report in certain instances and cases. So I feel like if it's something that I have to report, if it's somebody that I have to report, um, not necessarily if I have to report them because they're suicidal and they're trying to hurt themselves, but somebody that I feel like is at a, um, at a aggressive state um, or at a level that I wouldn't um, I wouldn't be able to give them the resources that they need. I would um, I would refuse to work with them. Um, I'm generally um, I'm a good guy. I try to even if I don't feel like I may be specializing in what you and what you are looking to get. I'm going to try to point you to to somebody that I know or to some resource to try to guide you. So I'm going to try to give you some type of help. I'm not going to just walk away and be like no. Or I'm just not gonna, <laughs> I ain't gonna just leave you like that. So I try to help out everybody that I can possibly help out. And if it's just something that I don't know about, hey, I'm gonna let you know and be honest. Because some people take you in and they know that they can't. And they even know they're wasting your time. And like the shade lot. tree mechanic, right? They know just you going on car. YouTube looking at shit, <laughs> trying to fix, fix that damn battery. When, they, when you asked them what the, and told them what the problem was, and they sat there and broke everything down. So I, I and I. 
I believe in integrity. I'm um, in my business is a huge thing to be professional and have that integrity. And so for me, I'm honest, and I I believe that. Um, with me having the initial consultation there, that helps me be able to have that interview and have that inter- and them have the interview with me to see if we'd be a good fit, so we don't be wasting each other's time. So you, so I don't ever make anybody pay to talk to me and get to know and see if we could be a good match. Um, and so I try to put that out there, be an honest man. So you know what we if, what you're getting yourself to, and I know what your goals are. So we able to work through those in the beginning. And so I think that that brings down a little bit of the bad matches that yeah. you can have. And then as far as the people just being terrible, shitty people, <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, they just I mean honestly in life. You're just going to have that in every level that you have. You're going to meet people that just aren't good and aren't honest, and they just going to do things that bring you pain. And so I think that that happens with, like, with the doctors that are misdiagnosing or over-prescribing medicines to people. Like, I'm, I really I don't like giving it out to the kids because they be all, like, zoned out and stuff. Like, they just, like, be sitting there, like, sloppy and stuff. Exactly. So I don't really advocate for over medicating the children like that. And I feel like you should give them an opportunity to kind of work through some of these and alternative methods and different things that we can try to help them so that we can kind of um, work with their with their what whatever, whatever their weak points are. Because um, I work with special ed community and I mean a lot of th- a lot of people that have been thrown away by the community that that people wouldn't normally work with. I've been work. I work with hard populations before, and I've found some of the biggest joys of my life and some of the smartest people in my life. Like, like you look at some of those autistic kids and you'll prejudge them, but some of those kids are like IQ level geniuses. Yeah, they, uh, they it's, really it, yeah. I, I've seen it online that like they're smart, but just in one thing, mm-hmm. they have certain like special areas that they really focus on because of their autism or whatever mm-hmm. and so that that is their thing and like they really are like tr- tremendous like great people low key like, i ain't even gonna stunt i thought i was autistic for a little bit hey <laughs> for mean, a little bit because i'm spectrum. super it's a, i'm it's a super good at like if i get if i do something then i'm super good i've worked in warehouses and everybody loves me because like i work so fast but it's like once i once I get it, then I get it, and I'm super fast at it. And then, like, other things I'm shitty at. But once I, like, do it a couple of times, then I'm good at it. And then I just forget everything else that it's I've a, ever it's learned. A technical, it's a technical thing for you. My wife kind of is like that. She, she's a she's, Virgo? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so it. She, that's Virgo able, shit. <laughs> you're able, she's able to really, like, take grasp of certain, like, concepts and really, like, go for it but those more abstract kind of deals like broad like you don't really like broad you like technical skills Mm -hmm. and I think that's probably why you went to a technical school and you got those technical skills because you wanted to focus on the actual meat of it you wanted to focus on being able to put your hands on what you actually really wanted to learn and all that extra stuff it's just a waste of time for you Yep. and it's like with you life coaching really works for you because it specializes like if I had a goal there you are. You can help me through this fitness goal. Like, I don't have to waste time trying to go through my past, trying to work through all this other stuff that you know, or medicines that you like. I don't feel like I need, like, I'm just really wanting you to kind of give me some real world, real time. Exactly. Advice. And so yeah. that works for you that kind of um, that way. But for other people, they, they like a more abstract thing and they like to be able to use it a different way. And so I think it really just depends on who you are as a person and what your, what your real, your real needs are where it'll be best for you to either get a life coach or a therapist or simultaneously use them both. So what are some of the people, I mean, we, we've been over there talking for a little bit about it, but what are some of the bad people that you've come up against? Some of the people that you just like, I really just can't deal with you. And what was the cause of that? What is the thing that makes you be like, okay, this person doesn't need a fucking life coach. They need somebody the fuck else, but not me. Mm, I haven't, and since I've started, I haven't came across any clients that were just like close the door. No, I can't help you. I haven't came across any like really hard, hard um, 
clients, but I've always prepared myself that if I did have a client that I wasn't able to work with or if it felt like that it wouldn't work for me. Of course, I would maintain my professionalism, and I would just be able to let them know, hey, that we're not going to be a great fit. And for me, I like vibes. I go off your energy. If I feel like we got good energy, we're we able to connect, we able to find things that we're able, that I feel like I can work on to help you, and you really resonate with me, then I feel like we'll be able to have a good match. But if we we um we talking in our initial interview, I don't feel like we're connected. You don't feel like you're able to get from get anything from me. You don't feel like my life experiences are things that I feel like I'm able to bring to the table. You don't feel like that's what you need. Hey, then that's then we don't really have to make that connection. Like I've talked to people that everybody wasn't converted to a client. Yeah. I've talked to people that just needed the initial consultation. Maybe they just wanted some questions about certain things. And so it wasn't anything that needed to be a long-term match like that. And so in life coaching, you never know. Some of them are short-term and then some of them are long-term. The client that I was talking to you that discussed um, that I got my first client off of my story, we actually are still um, in a in a client relationship. Really? Yes. Yeah, so she's still like right what now. What 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 year was that? This was like uh, I've only been open since November of last year. So since November, that's of still last year. super crazy. Mm-hmm. She's very. I mean, we've had a great relationship. Like, um, she's moved through life. She's gotten out of college. She's moved to a new state. You're probably and gonna be the godfather and shit. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> she's like she changed my life because. She the one that really, really, um, really gave me the um, the uh, the momentum to keep going because I kind of got discouraged and I'm like uh, I kind of got to a plateau with my clients. I kind of had the same ones. I'm like, man, like I'm kind of discouraged. But then it's like when uh when I, as soon as I was getting discouraged, she kind of like reached out to my inbox and she was like, I need to talk to you about something. I'm like, oh, okay. I was like, well, how you been? Um, I was like, it's good to hear from you. And um, she was like, I need to talk to you about something. And then like she, she was like, you changed my life. She was like, you changed my life. She was like, when I first talked to you, she said, I didn't know what I was going to get. I didn't know what to expect. She was like, I really just wanted to kind of know your story. She was like, I want to know how how you got to where you're going. And she was like, here we are today. And she said, you have changed my life. She was like, when I went uh, from our initial consultation of the goals that I had said, she said, I have accomplished every last single one of them. She says, I've um, I've been able to move to a new state. And she said, you have gave me the inspiration and the motivation to move myself out of that state state of mind to a different and transform my mind my mentality out of where i was was that a fucking pun bro <laughs> I, I said i said my name was inspired i said my name was inspired and so it really is a lot about transforming it's, it is a lot about because i feel like a lot of things that we hold ourselves back from is all in our m- mind my mom she's always told me that that was go- what was going to be able to get me to my next level of life if i didn't want to see my struggle anymore this is what i would have to work on first and so through loud life i've always made it a big deal to watch and be aware of what i feed my mind and feed my mind with things that i feel like are only the best that it's going to get me to the goals that i want to get to and i've been able to get my masters i've been able to accomplish almost all the goals that i've been able to set for myself and i've been able to heal myself from a place that nobody thought None of the doctors, none of my team thought that I would even live through. Because when I was twenty, I did have two strokes, and I I was in a coma. I remember for, that I was in a coma for seven days. They didn't think I, I was coming back. They really didn't. When I woke up from the coma, I had feeding tubes out my mouth. I'm just yanking tubes out my mouth. They're freaking out, like trying to like restrain me again. Cause I'm like, where am I? Where am I? What's going on? And my sister's like telling me that I like all my goals and my plans because I've always been a planner in life and she's like all these goals and plans she's like basically they are to a halt or you're basically not going to do them anymore because I was getting ready to go to the Air Force. I was in my last semester of college. I'm 20 years old. I went to college at 16. I'm feeling like I'm, I'm man, I'm like living <laughs> on the top of the world. I'm like 20 years old, and I'm like, I'm about to graduate my degree. I'm about to go to Air Force, have all this money, about to be doing like some cool things. They don't make things, that much travel. money. I'm going to have money because <laughs> military don't spend their money anywhere. They live on base. Like, they yeah. all come back home and have nice stuff. <laughs> so I was thinking that my future is set up. So when I woke up, I, 
I was that was one of the lowest points of my life when I woke up because I realized like my whole life was yanked from me, and it's like, what are you gonna do now? Really, I'm 20 years old and I'm having to figure out what I'm gonna do now, and I'm not walking. I just had two strokes, like. I don't know where my body condition is. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to be able to do anymore. Like you want to set goals, but sh- shit, you want to you want to first. Start you just want to live, live, <laughs> right? Yeah. So like, so it was definitely a hard place for me to to build myself from. And um, even though they told me not to go to school, I'm like, I have goals, and it's like I went back to school I, that fall. I got on the dean's list. I made a 4.0. They told me not to go back, but I made a 4.0 the next semester. I went and I added another um, another major, and so not only was I doing because I was doing criminal justice because I was just going to go to Air Force and do intelligence. So yeah, I remember I did that criminal justice. But then I went back and got business because I was like, who knows what's going to happen in life? I need to be able to take care of myself if I'm not able to work if I'm not able to do this. So I was like, I need these business skills, and so I went and added business administration and added another year on to my degree um but i was able to go ahead and complete that and my wife she came back in my life because we um we've known each other since second grade she was my first girlfriend she's who i came out with so the first girl that i told my mom about was her and you're married and we married now we've been married for going on eight years now and so um she came back in at that time i wasn't walking and she basically Love me from there. She, I can't say it was anything but love because I have nothing to offer. I had no car. I'm a stroke victim. Like, can't I, fuck. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> like, so I'm just saying, like, she had to. She really had to love me, and she came back and she took me to my doctor's appointments. I'm, I'm 20 years old. It ain't nothing but 75 and plus up in her stroke um, appointments, and so she was up in there. She rolled with me through it. Yeah. So I was able to go ahead and start school again, get back into another good relationship because I had, um, before that, I had just ended a, a, um, a three-year relationship. And so it was kind of hard. I was going through some hard um, mental things. And so yeah. I was able to get a, a good relationship back and I was able to go ahead and complete my degree um, and kind of build my life back up. And like here I am today, got a couple businesses, um, been able to... I ain't going to put that out there because I'm going to wait for this news. Okay. Got, well, that's I got good. Some, I got some big news I mean, coming. I got some big news. Well, you should come back on and tell us about it. <laughs> but I do want to touch in on this Atisha. Oh, God. What is her name? Atisha Bronson. Bernson. Um, the, the young lady that tried to commit suicide in the car because she figured out that. About yeah. her, um, her kid's dad, the baby daddy cheating on her. Yeah, that was mm. a really crazy story for me because um, I I didn't I don't get on social media a lot. I'm always running, running, running. By Thursday, I'm trying to figure out everything for my podcast. I don't know. I don't get on social media that much. But this story striked me because I knew that I was interviewing you for the podcast, and I was like, how well would she have taken that situation if she had a life coach and what a life coach would have been able to tell her in that instant. I mean, for the people that don't know, Atisha, and I really hope that I'm saying this young lady's name right, Atisha Bernson is a young lady that figured out that the man that she was messing with was married and she tried to kill herself. She survived and she's actually on um Facebook. She has a GoFundMe account. If you want to donate to that, go ahead. I wouldn't. But <laughs> that's just my opinion. I don't know. I think that she needs mental health from the fact that she just turned around and tried to kill her herself and her kids. Like, okay, girl, go ahead and kill yourself. But don't be over there dragging your babies up in that. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. But once again, once Maddie, um, do you know um, Madison Harley? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she got on and she started talking about her mental issues and her mental health issues. And I looked at it from a different perspective. Oh, yeah. So that was what very was enlightening? It was. Yeah, so what is that. some of the advice as a life coach that you would have gave that young lady? I think that she did definitely need somebody to talk to. And I feel like that is a situation that could happen to anybody that doesn't have the right resources in place as with um 
I listened to all of uh, Maddie's live and as she was saying in her live and things that she had been through, that it would have really changed the trajectory of the situation, how it turned out, if there was somebody that even just reached out and said, are you okay? Is there anything that I can do? Being able to have um, that structure in, the, in place to be able to have somebody to talk to if you do get to a point where you aren't in control or you too too weak because we do get to the point that sometimes we too weak to even help ourselves and so i feel like at this um at the point that the lady was in i feel like that was from months and a long um a, a lot of things that probably happened that led up to that point i don't feel like she just he just told her she just took off and she she took the kids and she made this decision i think that these, this decision was the uh, the effect of something of a situation that didn't get handled before and so she was at that point where she kind of like she didn't care anymore and she felt like that her life wasn't wasn't worth his mistakes and so um I do feel like that that brings awareness to a lot of us. I feel like that woke a lot of us up. I think that it brings a light to this situation and to a situation that is rigging our communities. There's a lot of cheating going on, a lot of infidelity, and these men are expecting these women to just be able to deal with it. And these women are battling these things alone because they are ashamed. They don't want to go out there and tell nobody what they men are doing. They don't want to be on Facebook talking about this. And so they over here knowing he cheated two, three times or, or times in a row. Like they dealing with months and months of abuses because they are ashamed. And we, and we as a community, don't make people feel good about being able to talk about their problems. So yeah. that's the reason why I feel like life coaching is so important because you do get somebody that you can trust. You do get um you do get somebody that is outside of your community. So maybe if you're worried about your business gonna be in some kind of small community and you don't want it to be there, you can go get your life coach that's somebody that can help you and not give you a subjective opinion. And so I do feel like it's important for people to be able to be able to access these resources and I do think it's important for us to be able to promote ourselves and get out there and let people know that we are there for them as well and I think that as a duty as our community I feel like we kind of let one go we kind of let one go because I feel like somebody should have been able to um, talk to her or I feel like she should not feel alone in a world of a billion people and so I do feel like at some point, like, we have an accountability to our community. And reach out. Like, don't be judging people. You don't know what they're going through. Like, talk to them. Like, be able to not pass so much judgment because I feel like the world is so insensitive. And a lot of this bullying and this stuff, and it's causing people that, like, really commit suicide. Like, suicidal rates are high. And, like, I don't feel like people should be driven to the point of wanting to kill themselves. Yeah. Like, I feel like that is, that's too much. I feel like we, uh, um, that we should not treat our brothers that way. And if it was a lot more love and we was treating each other with a lot more love, that we, these things wouldn't even be things that we had to have conversations about. And if that guy would have just loved her, so somebody would have loved her enough to be like, hey, you good. Yeah, and see, that's my problem with the whole situation, is that you just said it, it's a billion people out here in the world. Why are you tripping about this one dude? Like... You tripping about somebody that don't love. even love you. Because you in love. Yeah. It, love love, love is know, a crazy thing, but it's just... You don't think clearly all the time. You don't. Maybe I don't know. For make, my kids, I, I'd have to think clearly. Look, my mom told me this story. How how much time I got, Sean? How much time? Six minutes. Six minutes. Damn it. I didn't even get a chance to ask you the last question. But we're going to get to that really quickly. My, let me just tell the story real quick. My mom told me that... She had knee replacement. Um, actually, not even that story. Okay. She's been married twice, and both relationships failed. And she didn't know what she was going to do, but she had four kids. And she literally felt like that she was going to die. And that was two failed marriages with four kids. I don't know how many kids that this young lady had, 
But at a certain point in time, you really have to be strong enough for your kids because your kids really ain't got nobody in this world except you. Ain't nobody going to take care of your kids like you. You can send them to your auntie's house. You can send them to their daddy's house. You can send them wherever. But your kids ain't got really nobody in this world. So at that point, a motherly instinct should have kicked in like, yeah, I feel shitty. Yeah, I, this man didn't cheated on me or he had somebody before me. But at the end of the day, I got to be strong enough for my kids. Like anytime I think about a strong woman, I first think black woman. And then I think my mom second because she is the epitome of a strong black woman. Someone with four kids, didn't have anybody, didn't beg for anything, went to work, did what she got to do, dealt with mental health, not mental health issues, but depression and got through it enough to get her kids out of school, get her kids to where they needed to be retired, whatever. At some point, your motherly instincts got to kick off. I really do feel like that she had that baby with that man to try to keep him around. Honestly, I think that she knew what was going on, and then it was just confirmed that, yes, this is what's going on. And then the only way to hurt him, because we human beings, the only way to hurt him and make him, him hurt as much as her is to kill her and the baby. I mean, that is... That is definitely um, a, a different, the devil's advocate perspective to take on if that is the entire situation. I can't too much speak on if she actually knew it or not. I just know um, from what I heard and from um, as far as what I heard from the situation that it seems that she found out and her decision was to go ahead and drive her car off the bridge with a couple of her kids in the car. And for me, I feel like on the outside looking in, and I don't want to judge it, is that it was something that she couldn't handle. And so my, my decision wouldn't have been to do that for the kids, but some of the decisions that I make in my life wouldn't be a decision that somebody else would. Yeah. And I've coped with some things that some people would cope with it a different way. And we all have our challenges. And you can't, you can't tell somebody how they're going to respond to it. True. So, I mean, somebody else got cheated on, and they're like, hey, I've been cheating already, so I'm ah! good. I'm good. <laughs> so, hey, we cheating together. Hey, some people can continue their relationship because they find out that both of them cheated and they good with it. They start opening up. So, I mean, you never know where somebody's going to take it. I don't believe in being dishonest in a relationship because I believe that you don't know where somebody's going to take it with that dishonesty. And so I believe that. With him, he got somebody that may not have been that strong. She may she may be a weaker personality than your nice, strong Virgo personality. You are a lot more resilient naturally than a lot of other people. And so you are able to withstand stuff that some people will break. And that's okay. That doesn't make them bad people because they're not as strong as you. It just makes you a strong person. So. True. She was just weak, and I feel like us as a community, we can definitely send her some resources and try to get her some help. Just like people that are in prison, doesn't mean that they didn't commit crimes, but we don't want to go put them in execution chairs, and we don't want to just go kill them all. We want to offer them some rehabilitation. We want to offer them a way so that they can maybe get to a place that they can live and they can be normalized and they can live within society just like us. And I have compassion for that with the relationships, that would devastate me. Me and my wife been going for a long time, so that would break me. And I don't want to judge her because that would break me too. And who knows what I would do? Yeah. I ain't got no kids to drive off the bridge. <laughs> so, so just drive your bitch ass I'm off driving, the bridge yourself. Right. Don't be bringing them down, kids. Yeah. Oh, and my I, God. I feel like with the people, the children are definitely a sensitive area. But I feel like She's a sensitive area, too, for me. I wouldn't want her driving herself or her driving herself with the kids off. And so I don't necessarily pick out that the kids was in the car. I pick out the fact that she even wanted to drive, period, and kill herself. And the kids happened to be in the car with her. And so I feel like that's a problem that we need to address, that she needs the help because she she she's not making decisions that are safe for her or safe for the children. Because if she would have talked to me, I probably would be 
would have to report some of the things that she told me because I probably would have been able to catch that she was suicidal and that she probably need those resources. So when you asked me what I would have said to her, I probably would have said that, hey, baby, you probably need to go and get you some some help and go maybe to a mental institution, get your kids to their um, their grandmother for a couple of days and get yourself some time to process what just happened to you. Because and when you getting the, that type of news, it is very hard in the beginning. You can work it out. Time heals all wounds. But in those initial points and then those n- nights and moments when you really expecting that person to be there hugging you and loving on you and they're not there, those times are going to be hard. Yeah. So I will say that she needed some, she definitely needed some more e- extra support. And hopefully us as a community took this as a lesson and that we are able to maybe open up and that more people are able to open up about things that they may be battling with that they need to talk to so that they don't get to the point where they want to kill themselves or their kids. So, hey, talk to somebody. Exactly. Hey, find somebody trusted. Keep somebody close that you can be able to talk to, even if you need it. You ain't got to talk to them every day, but keep somebody around because everybody needs somebody to talk to. Exactly. And that is an hour with Crowder. Please go ahead out and give your social media outlets everything that you need to give to the audience so that they can get a good life coach that ain't going to be driving off the bridge with people. <laughs> Our website is www.transcendinglimitscoaching.com. Hey, yo, and this is your host Crowder with An Hour with Crowder, and we are out. <laughs> <laughs>